Hey folks, welcome back to another Chem Sketch video. In this one, I'm going to be giving a bit of an introduction to the drawing tools that are in Chem Sketch. And that might not sound particularly scientific, but you'll see that there are some applications of this that are particularly relevant for some of the things that you might be doing in organic chemistry. So let's jump right into things. Now, you're going to access the drawing tools in Chem Sketch through this menu right here. Uh, there's the structure area, which is usually where you start out in when you're getting into the program. Um, but you can jump over here into the drawing tools here, and this is where you get access to them. You'll see that there's a bunch of different um, uh, thingamabobs over here, different options, you know, lines and, um, and squares and such, and not much explanation is really necessary here. Um, you can go into the object properties and of course like change the colors and everything. Um, this is not particularly fancy uh, at, at this moment, so you don't really need to worry about that. But there are um, a few things that are, do, uh, are interesting about this. Now, within this pane here, within the, the drawing pane, you sort of interact with objects kind of differently than you do in the structure pane. Um, so you do this uh, here and you see that you select this entire object and move it around. So I'm actually gonna go grab, let's just do a little um, structure here, um, something like this, just um, a yeah, phenol, who doesn't love a good phenol, you know? Um, so when I'm in the, the structure pane and I would grab this, I use my little um, select move tool and I were to grab a particular carbon here, I would move this around or I could choose like a subsection of it, you know, things of this nature. When you're going over to the drawing tool though, um, this is one contiguous object that you can only move all together. Now this is actually helpful sometimes that if you want to move an object and like maybe things are kind of you know, messing in a way and you're having a hard time grabbing all of the bonds and all of the um, the, uh, the the molecules, uh, all the uh, atoms that are part of one molecule, um, this is a good way to do that. And you're gonna consistently just grab that one contiguous object. Um, but then also sometimes I, I find the program kind of jumps over to the drawing uh, a section um, when you don't expect it sometimes, which can be a little bit frustrating, but it, it does mean that you uh, can't interact with the um, objects in quite the way that you expect. So if you're running into that challenge, that's probably what's happening. But some, there are some other things that you can do with this. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit to, to see this next thing. So we have three objects here and uh, my, my very ugly molecule, my very boring rectangle and my even more boring line. Um, but let's say that I want these to be lined up. I can actually use these little tools here to um, line them up in different ways. So let's get them centered horizontally. We could have them align on the left, align on the right, um, things of that nature. Let's say I want this to be flipped around. So I want this weird um, bump on, on the side to be on the other side for whatever reason. I can uh, do this. Well, this flips it up that, uh, that way. We can flip it this way. Um, things of that nature, we can rotate it 90 degrees. Um, this is also, once again, like when you're moving molecules around, um, you have like maybe like laid out in a particular way and you're like, I probably want it to be upside down or flip the other way in order for doing something particular that you're doing with it. Um, and moving it around can, again, you know, just turning it um, by hand can sometimes lead to things being a little bit disorganized. Uh, but this, these little tools here can accomplish the same things. Um, but you, you're going to get it exactly accurate, which is which is nice. Um, one other little tool to point out while we're looking at this top bar here, we have the uh, select, rotate, move um, bit here. Grab it. We can rotate them on the corners is the, the, the best way to do that. We'll keep it on the square here. And we can also adjust the nose. What that means is that we uh, are grabbing this and we can actually get this to be a, a curved uh, box as opposed to just a with a the the hard um, corners. So that's nice in order to get a you know, softer appearance. And that's something that you might want to do if you are creating either you know, a report or um, some sort of you know, illustration for a class um, or something. So that is a nice little tool to um, have access to uh, for that. Um, you also have just have the rounded ones here if you want that instead um, too. But you can once again 
edit that if you don't think that the guy oh, that's a little bit too smooth for my liking. Also, you close by to this, we have the polygon tool here, which um, works similar to what you have, might have seen in other drawing programs. Um, and you can just draw things out and that you can have as many vertices as you want. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be using this for drawing actual structures. You have an entire structure section over here in order to do that. So don't um, do this with uh, the the chemical uh, structures if that's what you're um, looking for, but it does is help for, for other sorts of shapes. A couple other ones we get into the really interesting stuff, and that is uh, insert images. You can have that here. You select an area that you want it to, to fit into. Um, it'll go into your um, a menu that you can access to different files within your computer. I'm going to just grab this logo and add that right here. Just other minor things. Uh, brackets are, are useful uh, as well for highlighting different um, parts of a structure or parts of a you know, diagram that you have. If that's interesting, this works differently than the um, this tool here that you have for the brackets tool under the structure section. This is one that you can, um, you know, for instance, we'll set this as being a you know, polymer here. And so that this is not understand this section as being a, a polymer um, within that. And that this instead under the draw section, um, we can add this uh, either around this whole thing if we want. And it doesn't actually mean anything in terms of the, the program. It doesn't see that as having some um, chemical function. I am going to uh, quickly go to a, a new page just so we can see the next thing that I want to look at. And that actually has to do with arrows um, because this is one of the questions I, I, I see sometimes or I've, I've dealt with myself. Um, in how to draw arrows in um, organic chemistry, which is uh, very hard or not, not that hard. It's it's more, it's important, I guess, is the best thing to say um, because they are really relevant for the uh, like, like reaction mechanisms, um, of course. So let's do this. Here we have our um, little five carbon, um, little unit um, here, which this is something that can self-condensate of, of uh, if you are you're familiar with that in uh, organic chemistry, which essentially means that we can get a cyclic uh, structure out of this under the correct conditions. Um, and if you're in organic chemistry, what you want to do in order to um, uh, articulate this reaction is show an arrow going from this uh, oxygen right here uh, over to this um, double bonded O carbon right here to show that it's this attack that is happening. Um, you're doing this with um, the reaction arrows here is not what you should be doing. This is the um, A, the program understands this as it is a reaction, you know, within the step of a reaction. Um, so uh, that can cause some confusions for it. But these are also just not um, made for being curved, for example, which is usually you, you want to use the curved arrows in reaction mechanisms to show that that's what that, that is a organic chemical uh, mechanism, not a a, um, a reaction that's happening. So we can actually though go into this here. Let's go to grab um with it. there's different tools that we can use uh, for this. But we're actually going to start with the uh, arc here. I'm going to use the arc, uh, the, the fairly um, mild one, the 90 degree arc. And we're going to grab, go from here to here. And then uh, I'm going to right click object properties. We can go arrow and create this into an arrow. Ta-da! We have a perfect arrow. Um, from here, if I do say so myself, um, that looks uh, very uh, you know, tidy and then we can see really clearly the mechanism um, that is happening here. But there are, of course, other um, ones that you can do. You can see that there's a lot of other options that are available. Um, so that we can have uh, an arrow in both directions. We can um, have the uh, we can show this as a, a half arrow, which is important for uh, radicals. 
Um, so we can have that there. So there's lots of options within this of different types of arrows that you want under different organic chemical conditions under different mechanisms. Um, but that, that is a, a useful little tool to be able to use. And you can even um, change the, the, the nature of the um, the angle in various ways. It does require a little bit of getting used to of being able to um, maneuver these. Uh, I generally like to start with a, uh, a fairly the shallowest of the, the angles, go from where I want to start to where I want to go, and then kind of, you know, even though it'll sometimes be over top of a structure, you can um, jerry rig it, you can change it around to, uh, to get it to fit then afterwards. I tend to find that that's a little bit easiest. Um, to do, but you'll probably find your own uh, way that makes sense. Um, but that's what the arcs are really useful for, but you can do that with even the lines too. So that you have this uh, line here, you can do object properties, uh, arrow, uh, add one over here for this, sure. And so then we have that uh, as well if you wanted to just do it in a, in a straight way. So um, there are uh, lots of options. You can do it with a, a curve. I, I, you don't see these as much, I guess, but you can you can do that uh, as well. You can add the the arrow functionality to the ends uh, here. So single. Uh, this is also the uh, the the number of levels within it. So we can add this uh, you know, here as well, going from here to, to here, all possible, lots of options, uh, which is what we like in this uh, session. So that should sum it up here and this should help you a lot in your organic chemistry mechanism drawing. And uh, it's, it's pretty easy once you get used to it. It does take a little bit of, of practice to, to really feel these things out, um, but you'll find, I think, that once you get into it, um, that it'll uh, do usually what you want within um, a couple minutes. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hopefully this is useful for you. If there are questions that you have around um, ChemSketch and things that you want to do with the program, you know, let me know in the comments and I would love to follow up and either give you an answer to whatever questions you have or maybe even make a video around that. And then, you know, subscribe to the channel as well. Greatly appreciated, constantly putting out content for people at every stage in their chemical education process. So uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Take care.